I'm going to introduce the concept of open synthesis and how it relates to maximizing efficiency, rigor, transparency, impact, and legacy of evidence syntheses and meta-analyses. I wanted to start off just by talking about open science. It's obviously very important to the topic. There have been a number of different taxonomies and definitions set out to explain the key elements of open science. But in principle, they all uh, relate to the idea that it should be making science as accessible to the public as possible. There are various different uh, advantages and disadvantages that have been reported in relation to open science. Some of the advantages include things like more rigorous peer review, the fact that publicly funded research is publicly available, which perhaps is a mandate, the um, increased level of reproducibility and transparency of research, and related to that, a greater impact in open science research, and that open collaborations can support high complexity analyses. Some of the disadvantages relate to the fear of possible misuse of data in research, the risk that the public may misunderstand that research, there could be an exacerbation in the volume of poor quality research, and any existing power imbalances may be made worse by uh, the push towards open science. Before I move on to evidence synthesis, I wanted to um, think about closed evidence syntheses. Um, perhaps in many ways, the status quo of evidence syntheses, um, if not now, then recently. Some of the common issues with closed evidence syntheses are that they could suffer from uh, selective or incomplete reporting. Uh, and that's where the data or results that we're seeing may not be representative of the full analyses conducted. It could be that um, there's a lack of methodological detail, making it difficult to verify or uh, replicate the methods used. Some research is paywalled and can't be accessed. Uh, the research that has analyses uh, in involving code may not provide that code in a format that's reproducible. Where data is provided, it may be unclear or unusable. There may be uh, a waste in resources caused by uh, closed syntheses, um, particularly where there's a lack of collaboration or networking. Where people aren't honest about their um, potential interests in a topic, uh, and those conflicts of interest could be a problem, it's difficult to verify whether we can have trust in the, the analyses that have been done. Closed evidence syntheses may also uh, mislead decision makers if they're not reliable. And where a review uh, is attempted to be updated, it's very difficult to do so if the original review is closed and everything has to be done from scratch. The Open Synthesis Working Group is um, a group of people interested in the application of open science to evidence synthesis. And over the last uh, 12 months or so, they've been discussing um, a draft framework for open synthesis. And I wanted to share this, um, what is a draft framework for the key elements of how open science might relate to evidence synthesis. First of all, there's a concept of open collaboration, um, and that's non-selective opportunities for collaboration in evidence synthesis and meta-analyses. Open discovery, which is the, uh, the use of bibliographic databases that are free to use and free to export data from. Open methods, which relates to detailed methodology, which is freely accessible, describing the planned or uh, eventual methods involved in a synthesis, synthesis or a review. Open data, which we're probably all familiar with, which is freely accessible data. Open source, which relates to freely accessible software code for any programs that are developed within a review. Uh, open code, which relates to freely accessible analytic code within a synthesis or meta-analysis. Open access, which again, we're probably all familiar with and relates to freely accessible manuscripts and full texts. Open peer review, which relates to freely accessible peer review reports. Open education, which relates to freely accessible training materials. And open interests, relating to de um, the open declaration of financial and non-financial interests for all review authors. And the Open Synthesis Working Group will discuss what each of these might mean, uh, whether they're all integrally, uh, integral parts of open synthesis, 
uh, and any potential disadvantages or um, things that need to be look at, looked out for when trying to provide practical advice on being more open in evidence syntheses and meta-analyses. Open synthesis is important um, for a number of reasons. Firstly, evidence synthesis itself relies on the openness of the primary research that we are synthesizing. So we're often having to deal with hurdles around the openness of primary research. And as a result, we should be more aware and more, uh, more open to being open ourselves. In addition, um, evidence synthesis is already built on many open science principles. So for example, we already use open methods in systematic reviews where an a priori protocol is published in advance that outlines the methodology we plan to use. There are also reporting standards that help to ensure that the methods we're reporting are highly detailed and uh, reproducible um, and as reproducible as possible, like Prisma and Roses. But the linkages between open science and evidence synthesis so far haven't been explicit. And that means that the potential benefits of open science haven't been fully appreciated in evidence synthesis. We've also seen um, already, as we've seen in this presentation, evidence syntheses are often insufficiently open. And so the concept of open synthesis aims to explicitly define how openness should be applied in evidence synthesis and what the potential benefits might be. And those benefits are that it um, helps to facilitate full transparency and in particular digital transparency. It helps to uh, verify the results and conclusions of reviews and therefore increase the level of re reliability that we might have and the trust that we might have in syntheses and meta-analyses. Um, it can also help to increase and improve the access to resources um, in low and middle income countries or participation by low and middle income countries because of removing that um, financial barrier. It can also help to facilitate data reuse, for example, where we want to understand the methods used across a topic area. Uh, some people call this meta research. And it can help to increase the efficiency of review conduct by sharing work across people. It can also reduce the need for requests for information from corresponding authors, many of which we've experienced, um, which are often um, not particularly successful or may have a, a low efficiency or a big time lag. And it can help to raise awareness of and capacity building for the conduct of rigorous evidence syntheses. And finally, increase the impact of evidence syntheses by um, ensuring that the evidence syntheses are more reliable, uh, they're more rigorous and they're easier to find and use and integrate into further research.